we've been talking about locally linear embedding. We've done one example so far, the Swiss roll example that uh, your book also talks about. I want to do one more example. We're still going to work in three dimensions as our primary space, and then our embedded space will work in two dimensions. But I, but I wanted to add one more property here. And in particular, I wanted to uh, vary the density of the manifold. And specifically, uh, for our Swiss roll, our manifold was a true sheet. It was a two-dimensional plane. And here, I'd like to have some two-dimensional elements as well as some one-dimensional elements. So let's flip over to our Python code and uh, work on that. Right, we're, we're working in the same Jupyter Notebook as we were before uh, with our Swiss roll. Um, what I'm going to do is just substitute the data. So here's the original code that we developed for the Swiss roll. I'm going to write some new code. I'm going to call this the arrow data set. And just as before, we're going to have some notion of time that's going to run from negative 1 to 1. And then three features that are a function of time. So I'm going to set x0 to be exactly equal to time. And cut out that pause. x1 is uh, going to be a very complicated function of time. I'm going to have it, uh, I'm going to chop it into several different pieces and uh, cut that out. All right, so the first piece is, is going to be a middle piece. It's a, essentially a one-dimensional manifold here. So, this, so uh, random dot uniform uh, enforces a uniform distribution within the range that's given here. So, so we're going to vary between negative 1 and 1, and then I'm scaling that uh, by 0 0.02. OK, so this, this is going to be our middle piece. Uh, what I haven't shown you is that uh, ultimately there's going to be a 4 v in t. So, so v is going to iterate over all of our time points here. So for the v's that are between negative 0.5 and 0.5, we're going to select a random uniform uh, value that is very narrow. We're shrinking that uh, variance down quite a bit. And now let's handle the other two cases. All right, so again, we're using a random uniform distribution here between negative one and one, and we're scaling it not by a constant, but actually by a function of v. And we'll, we'll see how that actually uh, affects things. And then the last case is the, the v is uh, greater than or equal to uh, negative 0.5. OK, so there we go. All right, so, so this is the case where v is uh, greater than or equal to 0.5. Right at 0.5, uh, this, this term is actually uh, 0. So, it, so, so uh, we're going to yield a, a 0 here. But uh, if v is just a little bit uh, greater than 0.5, then this is a positive value. And, uh, and so we're going to select from a, 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 a wider range of values. And as V gets bigger and bigger, that range is going to increase. In this case here, we're doing the same sort of thing, except uh, at negative 0.5, we have a really wide range. And as V gets closer and closer to negative 1, that range decreases. So, so we have these two 
an arrowhead on one side and maybe some feathers on the other side here. Okay, and then finally, uh, for the final dimension, we're going to uh, use a cosine function here. And, and the choice here is somewhat uh, arbitrary. And then from there, we can actually do exactly what we did with our Swiss roll. I'm going to go ahead and go through that, uh, copy that, bring it down here. And of course, there is an error. It's A range, only one R. Uh, I'm sorry, I started this up. There we go. Sorry, I start. I started up a new notebook and hadn't uh, initialized everything. Okay, so now we've executed this arrow cell here. We have a data set now. X is uh, two thousand samples uh, by three features. All right, so let's look at uh, X zero by X one. So that's what this plot did for us with the other case. And and there we go. So now you can see those two arrowheads. Let me zoom out a bit. So, so that is the, this middle region where we have this really narrow distribution. So effectively, um, the manifold is one dimensional. It's along this dimension and there's essentially nothing going on uh, along the vertical dimension. And then once we get out, to, get out to here, the variance increases very dramatically. And then as we get closer to this negative one point, it, it narrows down. And likewise, we're doing the same uh, on this side here. Part of our motivation with this data set is we want to be able to look at what LLE can do and what some of the other methods are that are coming, uh, how well they can do with this scenario where we uh, provide uh, a data set that has uh, varying dimensionality to its manifolds. Okay, so let's look at, at this in three dimensions. So that's what uh, this code does, and this should already be in your notebook. Let's execute that, and, and there we go. So there's the vertical dimension is that cosine dimension. So we've taken that, that arrow and, uh, and uh, curved it along a, a cosine. All right, so from, from here, let's go ahead and create our locally linear embedding model. I'm going to start with a small number of uh, neighbors. Again, this code is already code that you've, you've put together. We're trying to compress this down to two dimensions because uh, everything certainly fits in a two-dimensional manifold. So that training just took, took a few seconds. The, the shape of our uh, outputs is as we expect. It's 2,000 by two features. And now let's look at what we ended up with. So there we are. So that's a very interesting uh, distribution here. Uh, so we've eff almost effectively compressed this down to one dimension, which is kind of interesting. Uh, so there's the one end of our arrow. That's the pointy end of our arrow. And uh, this takes us all the way through the, uh, the, the narrow region. And then this region here, we've compressed all of the, the feathers of the arrow down to this one dimension here. So, so let's go back up to here. So, so our, our feathers are all red and then they're orange at the tip. And then the linear region is orange, yellow, through to cyan and uh, green and cyan. And then we have some cyan at the, at the arrowhead there. So, so it almost feels like we've sort of, we've grabbed, we've represented one dimension, which is uh, this horizontal dimension in this figure here, but we've lost this uh, vertical dimension. So that's a little bit, uh, disappointing. Let's try and increase our number of neighbors, see if that changes anything. I, I guess before we do that, the other odd thing is that we've got this weird discontinuity here. Uh, and I don't really have a good explanation of that. I, it's 
it's unclear as to whether or not it's properly identifying these points here as neighbors. So I've set n neighbors up to 10. And let's look at what we end up with here. OK, so now, now we have perhaps a little bit better result, although we're still st stuck within uh, effectively one dimension here. We, we still are not seeing, we kind of expect uh, at uh, this point here to see some, some variance along a, another dimension. There's, there's another manifold dimension here that we're missing. Uh, and likewise, over here, we're missing the manifold dimension that takes us out this direction here. Um, but, but it has captured the, the primary uh, dimension uh, manifold-wise. So just for fun, let's kick this up to 40 neighbors. See if that changes anything. The learning time is going to go up just a little bit. Okay, so so we're we still have that one dimension, but but that second uh, degree of freedom in in the manifold, we we still are not able to recover that. Okay, so so this illustrates uh, what LLE can do. Uh, there's clearly this is one of those cases where it isn't able to recover both dimensions of the manifold that we'd like it to pull out. All right, and so that's going to take us on to some uh, new methods.